everybody welcome back to this channel thank you so much for tuning in today for subscribing for commenting for liking and for all your support appreciate that so much and if it's your first time welcome to this channel welcome. i am daphne and i'm lloyd thank you so much for tuning in today and mm -hmm. if you're not subscribed please make sure that you subscribe and you click the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on this series and on these videos and welcome to wisdom wednesdays we're back again and joining me is my wonderful husband lloyd um Amen. last time you were in the video and you mm -hmm. were sharing some really powerful mysteries concerning the ancestry of ruth mm -hmm. and we were discussing earlier um you were just mm -hmm. sharing with me some really um powerful truths concerning a husband mm -hmm. a first husband and i felt like wow this is really powerful mm -hmm. before we really get into the groove of ruth's story Amen. i feel this is a really powerful foundation to know who she is and mm -hmm. who her husband was where did they yeah. meet and yeah. It sort of give us gives us a picture of also Naomi and yeah. her husband, you mm. know, how they started their journey in Moab and really powerful stuff. Um, mm. If you don't mind sharing Amen. again this week. You know, I give God the glory because all these things that we share with you, it is for you. I reminded what Jesus said in the scriptures. He said unto you. It's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You know, the reason why we share the word of God so much is because I'm also reminded of what Paul said. He said, we mm. has open face as beholding in a glass the glory of God. We are changed to that image from glory to glory. Mm. When I um, put a mirror before you, mm. what do you see? Myself. You see yourself. Exactly. And now the scripture says, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. The scripture says that we are beholding in a glass. Mm. That glass is the word of God. Mm. So we always present the word of God to you because mm. when you continuously look into the word of God, you see the reflection of you. Mm. And that reflection, the Bible calls it the glory of God. Mm. Ooh. Amen. Glory to God. This is why we share, you know, the word of God. And concerning the series of um boaz and ruth mm. there's a lot of powerful yeah. truths mm. in that in that book and we were talking earlier yeah. and we we're just in awe what? of you know the things that are in the word of yeah. god Gosh. amen and we want to share that yeah, with you so that. i want you to go to the word of god and follow and read along with us because we don't don't want you to just you know watch us but we also want you to go into the Word of God, go into your mobile device, go into your physical Bible, and also look into the Scriptures. So, Amen. Ruth chapter 1. Mm. Let's begin from Ruth chapter 1, and let's begin from verse 1. The very beginning. Exactly. <laughs> Ruth chapter 1 from verse 1, if you can read Amen. that. Yeah, if you have a notebook, just make some notes. If you want to grab a cup of tea, um, a drink... Just do so, amen. and uh, we can hang out together. <laughs> amen and amen. So, Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 says, mm -hmm. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled mm -hmm. that there was a famine in the land, mm -hmm. and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn mm -hmm. in the country of Moab, yep. he and his wife and his two sons. Okay, so we notice something that this story of Ruth happens in the time of the judges. Mm. So when you read uh, the book of Judges, somewhere in that book the is answers. where there's, the, uh, you know, the, the story of Ruth. Yeah. Amen. So it could be, I don't know which judge it was, mm. you know, you know, some say maybe it could have been during the time of Gideon. Some say it could have been before, mm. but that story happens during the time of the judges, yeah. somewhere during the time of judges. Yeah. And we, we are notified that there's a fair mine yeah. that takes place. Mm. And, I want us to look at the names because that's the, you know, what the Lord was revealing unto us, the power of names. Power of and names. sometimes when you read your English Bible, you know, it's, we can easily just bow, browse through, yeah. you know, just like, you know, when you read the genealogy of Jesus, oh, this, this guy begot this guy, this guy begot, you can just easily, you know, run through that. But, you know, when you understand the Jewish culture, names are very important yeah. because names, they reveal a person's identity. Mm -hmm. They reveal a purpose. Yeah, and a season. And a season, yeah. exactly. And some names um, of people were named because of an, an event. An event, And yeah. sometimes, you know, names were changed. Mm -hmm. 
As you know that Abraham's name was changed. Yeah. He was Abram. Yeah. To Abraham. Sarai. Sarai to Sarah. Sarah. You know, those were changed. Yeah. And you got, you know, uh, Joshua. Joshua yeah. wasn't his real name. Mm -hmm. It was Hosea. Then Moses changes to Joshua. Because it was all for a reason. But, but I want you to build a foundation of the power that are in behind names. And if you go to Genesis, we're going to go back to this. You know, stay with me. But I want you to reveal something about the power in names so that we'll look at, hallelujah, these characters in the book of Ruth. Yeah. If you look at Genesis chapter 5, it's all a bunch of names in Genesis chapter 5. And when you read in the English Bible, it's all a bunch of names. There are 10 names there. But those 10 names are not there to just fill space in the Bible. They are there to reveal something, something that God wants to do on earth. Like when you read Genesis chapter 5, you read, yeah. there, there's what, Adam first, right? Yeah. Adam means what? Man. Yeah. Then after Adam, there's Seth. Yeah. Seth means appointed. Mm -hmm. Then after Seth, there's Enosh. Enosh means mortal. Then after Enosh, there's Canaan. And Canaan means sorrow. Yeah. And after Canaan, there is Mahalalel. Mahalalel means the blessed God or he that descends. Yeah. Hallelujah. And all these names mean something. There's Enoch. Enoch means teacher. Yeah. Then after Enoch, there is Methuselah. We, yeah. we know that he lived the longest yeah. on the earth. But yeah. Methuselah's name means his death shall bring. It's so prophetic. It's so prophetic. Yeah. Then after Methuselah, Methuselah has a son and he gives a name Lamech. Yeah. Lamech means sorrow. Mm. Then Laman has a son and he gives him the name Noah. Noah yeah. means comfort mm -hmm. or rest. You see, to us, it's a bunch of names. Yes, a bunch of names. Hallelujah. But to these individuals, especially the Jewish yes. culture, these names mean something. Yeah. And when you join the names in Genesis chapter 5, they make a, they make a prophecy concerning yeah. Jesus. Right. It means man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring despairing comfort and then rest my god all a prophecy ah. of the messiah wow. in a bunch of names mm, that's powerful hallelujah so names are very important so now when we go back to yeah. ruth chapter one mm. what are those names revealing yeah hallelujah so if you read uh ruth chapter one verse two if you go to verse 2. And the name of the man was Elimelech. Ah, Elimelech. Elimelech. Yes. Elimelech. What does that mean? Elimelech means God is my king. Mm. That's what the name means. God is my king. Then what happened? And the name of his wife, Naomi. Naomi. What does Naomi mean? It means pleasant. Or it means beauty. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the name of his two sons, uh -huh. Malon. Malon? And Chilion. Okay, and then Malon. What does Malon mean? Now, this, you know, when we're doing the mm. study, you know, we're wondering, why would a man name his son Malon? You know what Malon means? Malon means uh, sickly. Yes, yeah, sickly. Or, you know, wounded. Okay. Or sickly. Yeah. That's what Malon means. Imagine a father whose name means God is my king. And his wife's name means pleasant, mm. but yet they name their son sickly. sickly. What's going on here? Exactly. What's going on? <laughs> Why would you name? I don't know if those are watching that you yeah. would name your son What's happening? sickly. Yeah. I wouldn't. No. <laughs> we named our son Gabriel. <laughs> wouldn't name our son, you know, sickly. Yeah. But this guy named his son sickly. There's something so that happened. What's, what's happening? Yeah. Because when you, as I said, when you look at the Jewish culture, mm -hmm. they name their children after an event. Yeah. Hallelujah. So his brother's name was called what? Uh, Chilean. Chilean. Now, what does Chilean mean? It's also like sickly. Yeah. But his name means it shall come to an end or Dest destruction. Destruction, yeah. Hallelujah. What's yeah. going on here? Mm -hmm. So sickly and destruction are the children's names. And if you continue words. reading. Uh -huh. uh, Ephraimites of Bethlehem. Ah, Judah. Ephraimites. Ephraimites, it means fruitfulness. Mm. Uh -huh. Of Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem means a house of bread. Yeah. And Judah, as we know, hallelujah, means praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they came into the country of Moab. Okay, Moab means a place of incense. Hallelujah. This is because the word Moab, 
it, it actually means that he is from my father. Mm -hmm. As we learned in the last video yeah. of the origin of Moab. Yeah. Hallelujah. So that's what Moab means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And continued there. And continued there. Mm -hmm. So he lived there. Yeah. So wait a minute. So we see that the, the name of the man is called God is my king. Mm -hmm. And his wife is called Pleasant. Mm -hmm. And their two sons are called sickly mm -hmm. and destruction. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And these are coming from a fruitful place. From the house of bread in the land of praise. Mm. But they leave that land and, they go somewhere and else. go to a place where there's what? Incense. Incense. Uh-huh. Can you see this? And what happens? They journeyed. They sojourned there. But this is fascinating mm -hmm. what it says here. They came into the country of Moab and continued there. And continue there. It seems like they are going somewhere, mm -hmm. but they go they get into Moab yeah. and they stay there. And they stay so and they're guys, comfortable they're there. They're comfortable there. Mm -hmm. so, sort of like Lot. Yes. He was going yeah. somewhere. Then he just happened to stay in Sodom. No, he wasn't having to stay where? In Sodom. In Sodom. Mm. And then he just happened to stay he there. Stay, and became a judge became there. Became a judge there. So mm. he became comfortable looking for green pastures. And you know, this is, what do we learn from this? Because, you know, when you read this, mm. you know, us in the new covenant, what do we learn from this? Mm. Because the Bible says that these things are written for our learning. Mm. You imagine that this guy is coming from the house of bread. Mm. Hallelujah. Live in the house of bread because there's a shortage. Yeah. And he's living in the house of bread and he's going to greener pastures. Yeah. And he goes to a land of incense. Of incense. Hallelujah. A land whereby, you know, the, the history is not so good. No. And he dwells there. He decides to stay mm, there. And this good. is, and it looks good. Yeah. Because, hey, there are greener pastures. There's greener pastures. Where yeah. I'm coming from, there is nothing. Mm, physically. And physically. Yeah, and this is pastures. what happens to so yeah. many people. Mm. You know, they leave the presence, that glorious presence of God. And they go after their sight. Mm. You know, the Bible says we do not walk by sight, but we walk by faith. Mm. Because when you walk by sight, you can do the same mistake as... as, as um, 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 a, 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 a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so when you walk by sight, you can do the same mistake as Amel um, uh, Elimelech. Elimelech. Yeah. It's like a baby, like a living like <laughs> a living a living like a living like yes. So when you walk by sight, you can do the same mistakes as a living a living like a living like. A little bit like. Uh, oh, should we say? No, we can't say Eli. Mm. <laughs> In short, a little bit like. A little bit like. Yeah, a little bit like. <laughs> oh, wait, a little bit like. Yeah. Let me see. We are looking at how to pronounce this name. <laughs> yes. So to say more interesting biblical names as well. So make sure to stay tuned. How do you say it? A little bit A little bit A little bit A little bit So. <laughs> so, you know, when you walk by sight, you can do the same mistake as Alimelech because he actually was moving by sight. And moving by sight, he made the wrong decision. He dragged his whole family from the house of bread to Moab. Oh my God. How many times do we do that? Mm -hmm. God, you see, God's presence here, it's not like... Um, what we mean by God's presence, coming mm -hmm. out of God's presence. It's more yeah. like God's will. God's will, God's exactly. God's will, which is good, acceptable, and perfect. So sometimes God has a plan for you for your marriage, has a plan mm -hmm. for your career, has a plan for your future generations, where, you, where he wants you to live, mm -hmm. where he wants you to be educated. Uh, you know, even small things like where to buy a car. Mm -hmm. And we come out of that place mm -hmm. of his perfect will because we are making decisions. Out of what we see, out, out of, of sight, what we see, and instead so, of being led by the spirit of God, led by the spirit of God, mm. this is what happened here. Amen. You know, one other example is if you remember the story of um, Isaac, mm. because Isaac yeah. was in Gerar, yeah. and the Bible says the same thing happened. There was a famine, famine. in Gerar, yeah. just like in this case with Amil, Amil, Alimelech Amil. and his household. There was a famine in in Bethlehem. But they decided to walk according to the senses. Yes. But the word of the Lord came to Isaac 
in Gerar, mm-hmm. in time of a famine. Yeah. And he said, hey, do not go to Egypt. Yeah. Everybody else is going to Egypt. Everyone's going to Egypt. The and world system. The system. Everybody else is going to Egypt. Yeah. But I want you to stay where you are. Kingdom system. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Stay where you are. That's why we're encouraging you to listen to the voice of the Spirit. Do not go to, you know, because everybody else is doing something and say, hey, I, w- I don't want to be left out. Let me do it. Don't walk by sight. Walk by faith. And the Bible says, you know what? Isaac, you know, soared, hallelujah, in that land, yeah. in a time of famine. And what happened? He received a hundredfold glory, glory to, to God. God. Are you seeing this? Hallelujah. But this man mm. took his whole household yeah. from the place of bread. bread. Do not depart from the place of bread. My God. You may look and say, hey, nothing is happening. Maybe you have prayed. Yeah, nothing is going on. Five years. Five years, Things 10 years, moving. or like Abraham, 25 years. Yeah. And you wonder like, you know Looking what? I've age. been in this place for yeah. so long. Same job. Nothing going mm. on. Do not, hallelujah, make a decision based by, by sight. sight. Hallelujah. They just do not live by sight. Mm. They walk by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know, what else do we learn? Because remember I said that, you know, um, you know, he named his sons Chilean, Ma- Chilean and, Malo. and Malo. But why would you name the sons Chilean and Malo? You know, in uh, our study, we actually saw that these were not really their names. No, they were changed. They were changed mm. because of a situation. A situation happened. Mm. And it was, it's not an uncommon thing yeah. in the scriptures for somebody to change their yeah. name. In fact, close to home, <laughs> Naomi, changed, Naomi the name. changes the name because of a yeah. situation. She's not, saying, mm. um, she's not saying I'm going to change my name. She says, call, call me Mara. Me. Mm-hmm. Call me Mara. Do not call me Naomi because she's already changed. Do not call me Pleasant. Do not call me Pleasant. Because I haven't been, I haven't experienced yeah. pleasantness. I haven't experienced it in this, mm-hmm. this season of, of decline. Mm-hmm. So call me Mara, which means mm-hmm. bitter. Mm-hmm. Just like Miriam or Mary, isn't it? It means mm-hmm. bitter. So yeah. Mm-hmm. But what do we see? So what are their names? And this can be explained in First um, Chronicles chapter 4. Mm-hmm. And if we go to First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles. And this which I'm sharing, um, some Jewish commentaries uh, believe this. So I'm also sharing this with you. And as I looked in the scriptures, you know, it's, it's, so it's, it's amazing, clear. amazing. Hallelujah. So First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 22. And Joachim and the men of Choziba and Joash and Saraph. Mm-hmm. Who had dominion mm-hmm. in Moab? Yeah, and Jushabi Lehem, mm-hmm. and these are ancient things. Uh-huh. These were the potters, mm-hmm. and those that dwelt among plants and hedges, mm-hmm. and they dwelt with the king for his worth. Okay, I know that when you read that, it may not make sense no, to you. Doesn't mean it much. Doesn't mean much to you. But let me explain this. Um, first Chronicle chapter four from verse one, it actually is the genealogy of Judah. Mm. Okay. So Judah is where, as we know from, uh, last uh, time as we did this study that this is where, um, Boaz comes yeah. from the ancestry of Boaz. Yeah. And of course, this is where our Lord and savior, the ancestry, physical ancestry yeah. comes from. Yeah. So Judah, but in that lineage, there's something that we see here yes. in from verse 22. He said, Joachim, and the men of Choziba, Joas and Saraph. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that's interesting concerning these two characters, yeah. which I believe these were actually Marlon and Chilean before yeah. they changed their names. Before they changed their names. Hallelujah. They Remember, we say, we say that, you know, it's, it's not, you know, uh, unusual thing for people to change yeah. their names. Amen? Mm-hmm. As I said, like Joshua was changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joshua was, was, uh, yeah. was Hosiah, I mean, but changed to Joshua. The Lord changed many of his disciples' yes, names. Paul, uh, I mean, um, Simeon was changed. Peter, Peter was, the yeah. The two brothers. Exactly. Yeah. So how do, I, how do I know that it's them? Mm. Watch what it says. And it says that who, ha- who had dominion in Moab? Now, the interesting thing is that, interesting thing that, that word dominion, yeah. 
Hallelujah. The Hebrew word means more than dominion. Yeah. It actually, in other places, is translated as marriage. Mm. That were, that married mm. in Moab. Mm. Woo! Mm. That got me. These, that two mar- men. these two men married in Moab. Married in Moab. Mm. And also, it also means dominion in the sense that when they married in Moab, they had a sort of a position in Moab. Yeah. This was not mm-hmm. a marriage where it's a um, commoner. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a commoner. This is mm. something to do with royalty. Yeah? Royalty, That's why exactly. there's dominion there. That's why mm. they translate to dominion, but it also means marriage. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at the word from the Hebrew word, it also means marriage. marriage it has yeah. to do with marriage. These married in Moab. Mm. And there's no other from the, from the lineage no. of Judah who married yeah. in Moab. No. Except these two guys. These two guys. And why is that? Hallelujah. And you see, the, yeah. the word is revealing. I like that the, the word of God reveals, reveals. It always things. confirms. It always confirms. All the time. Hallelujah. And what else? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. And it says, and Jeshu Behalem. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And when you look at that word in Hebrew, in Hebrew it may seem like it's a name. Mm. But the rendering is, it means that retainer of bread. Mm. But it also means that a rendering of inhabitants of Lem Lechem. Yeah, that is? That is Bethlehem. Mm. So in other words, that could be translated as, these were inhabitants mm. of Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Can you see this? Two things. Mm. They married... In Moab. In Moab. But and they were inhabitants. They were inhabitants of Bethlehem. of Bethlehem. Wait a minute. And they're in the lineage of Judah. And they're in the lineage of Judah. Hallelujah. So we know more about Chilean and about Melo. So yeah. we here we get a chance to actually see the Ruth's yeah. first marriage. Yeah, Ruth's that first wait a marriage. minute. That you know what? They had a certain they had a position, position in Moab. And if you read further, it actually explains mm. this. It explains what they do. Hallelujah. Verse 23. The Bible says, and these, these two guys were porters. Mm. So this yeah, is what porters. they did. That's the occupation. Pottery. Mm. That's what they did in Moab. And I believe there's a movie about Ruth. It's a very old movie. Yeah. I'll put it in the description box if you want to watch it. It's quite long as well. <laughs> I think it's three or four hours. Yeah. It sort of portrays this uh, to, yeah, a, to some a degree. Parts. Yeah. Some parts, right. Portrays the husband of... Is it... Oh, no. They were artisans. Oh, they were artisans. So it's they're, kind of close. Yeah, they were artisans. It's kind of close, but... It's a little bit giving insight into this mm. in some way, isn't mm. it? Yeah. So, but here it says there were actually porters. Porters. So they went to pottery. And what else? It says, and they dwelt among plants. That is a little vague to us. Dwell yeah. among plants. Because Wait, the word plants, plants there, it's actually, uh, it's actually a place. Yeah. That also means plants. Mm. That a place whereby there are a lot of shrubs and plants. Yeah. Like, for example, here mm-hmm. in England, in the countryside particularly, they name places or houses mm-hmm. after, like, the trees around. Mm. So if they're, let's say, a lot of... Um, Tulips tu- no, or no, conifer. No, tulips are uh, flowers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if they're conifer trees, they yes. might name that cottage conifer. So I don't know in other countries if they do that, but here they do that quite a lot, mm. especially in the countryside. So this place is called uh, Netem. Yeah, Netem. So that word Netem, that's where they translate it as plants. So yeah. it's actually a place. Yeah. And that place was near, it was actually in Moab. In Moab yeah. in, it's actually in Moab. Yeah. And and the Bible says that, so this is the place where they dwelt, and hedges. Yeah. And they dwelt with the king, Ooh, the king. for his work. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you talking about royalty here? Uh, like yeah, Esther. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is what they did. They dwelt with the king for his work. Oh so they, they were doing service yeah. for the king of Moab. Moab. Can you, Can see, you see why they're staying there? Why mm. they became so comfortable? Yeah. This family suddenly had a position. Their sons are working for the king. So can you imagine? Mm. You feel like your life is secure, but you have left the place of bread. Mm. Your life looks secure physically, but you yeah. don't know what's going to happen in the future because you have left. You have left the place, the place of bread. Of bread. Mm. So they just decided to say, to stay there to because stay it says there. they continued. They continued there ten there. years. So that means they were, there. they were comfortable until stuff started to go on, mm. until My. the names began to change. Yeah, and, and you know, according to Jewish history, 
uh, old commentaries. Yes. Some uh, don't take this as yeah, gospel. This is, not this is in just the Jewish, um, you know, commentaries yeah. on the on on Ruth. Ruth. They actually believe that Ruth uh, and Opa were sisters. Yeah. And they actually believe that Ruth uh, could have been the daughter of the king of King of Moab, whose yeah. name was Eglon. Yeah. Eglon, his story you can find it in uh, Judges chapter three. Okay. Eglon, because he's the he's the guy whom the Bible says was a very fat man. Okay. <laughs> you know when the Bible says you are fat, and then you are, you fat. are fat. You know, you know, <laughs> you know. The Bible says, you know, that's not. We're not, that's, we're not laughing. We're not like that's not ways, obviously that's not uh, p uh, politically correct, yeah, but no. that's why the scripture says yeah. that he was a very fat it's man. Just, it's just fascinating. He's just fascinating when yeah. they because the he's the only guy yeah, that the Bible right? says he was fat. <laughs> yeah. You know, but he was killed by this guy called El Elub, and who was left-handed. So that is believed to have been the father of Ruth and Opa. And now here the Bible says these guys were in yeah. service to the king. My God. Can you say this? Yes. So 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 that is something else about that marriage. Yeah. That actually Ruth may have come from what? Royalty. royalty. Could have. Could have come from yeah. royalty. And Opa both could have yeah, come from royalty. Have. But something went wrong. Something went wrong there. In Hallelujah. Those ten years. In those 10 years, something went wrong. And this is later they changed their names because of the stuff that was happening yeah. in Moab. Yes. Mm. Okay. That's why Chilion was changed. Yeah. In, you know, I mean, um, Chilion, which means destruction. Yeah, destruction. And he, I believe, was killed. In Moab. I believe that uh, there was mm -hmm. a sickness that came on him as well. Mm -hmm. I believe, um, yeah, something that was destroying his mm -hmm. health. I don't know. That's just what I believe. Mm -hmm. Like the brother who became sick. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but what do we learn from this? Yeah. We learn that these guys left the place of bread. Left the place place of bread, and they sought greener pastures. And it, it all was, you know, comfortable for yeah, a while. Working for the king. But you see, what happens when you leave the place of bread? You may enjoy for a season. Yes. But it won't last. Um, because... I, you, you mentioned the prodigal son. Which yes. Which is quite a good example. Mm -hmm. He left the place of bread, his father's house. Yeah. It was comfortable spending his money. It was until comfortable. Until he became poor and until, eating yeah. the pigs. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Exactly. You became, you, you, sorry, you, mm -hmm. you are comfortable for a time. Then yes, yes, change yes. And, dwindle and down. also similar to, you know, the story of the Good Samaritan. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that he was actually leaving Jerusalem, going into Jericho. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's also symbolic. Yeah. Like yes. living the, you know, the city of the king yes. and going into Jericho. Mm -hmm. It's like going into the world. Yes. And when that journey took that journey, something happened on the way. So this is to encourage oh you. God. Never make decisions based on sight. And some of you mm. are very talented. Some of you watching, mm. you're very talented, as they say, in the world. Mm. And you're wondering, where can I get my talent to overflow mm. it seems like in god's perfect will in mm. god's good and acceptable will your talent doesn't look like it's flourishing or it's causing you to be uh, in the presence of kings but my word or my word of advice is be patient yes be patient don't mm. run ahead of god mm. because yes you'll meet people and they'll make you big mm. but how long can you handle that Mm. Are you prepared for that? Mm. Will you be able to sustain it in your own grace or your own strength? Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Because it's very important, it's very important. you know, be pa patient. Patience. Hallelujah. Patient, be even led by the Spirit of God. Yeah, yes. even when it seems like yes. nothing is happening in your life. Yes. But be patient. Patience. Hallelujah. Be patient. Don't make decisions based or upon, you know, upon what you see. Mm. Now, this marriage of Malon and Ruth yes. was unfruitful. Yeah, so. It was unfruitful mm. because the foundation was wrong. Yeah. Because these guys had left the house of bread, you know, seeking green pastures. And you know, they were married uh, probably for 10 years, mm -hmm. but there was no fruit of the womb. So that means it was unfruitful. Unfruitful. You know, they, yeah. you can discover that there they can be relationships or friendships that you can have which yeah. are unfruitful. unfruitful. You know, which are unfruitful. So yeah. it's very important to know first who you are. What yeah. is your name? Yeah. What's your identity? What is your identity? 
Interesting. You know, you can't get, you can't be one with somebody whose name is sickness. My God. You can't be one with somebody whose name is destruction. <laughs> somebody whose name is destruction comes to you and say, hey, I'm proposing to you. Yeah, I want and to marry you. I want to marry Beautiful. you. His name is destruction. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if anyone would accept that. His name is destruction. His name is sickly. And sickly and wants to be one with you. And sometimes you mm. don't see that on paper. You see, mm. you don't see that on paper. Because remember, these guys' names changed in the process mm. of time. So it looks good on paper. He's got, what, a six-pack. And mm. he's got six figures. Mm. Drives a nice car. He's got his own house. It looks great on paper. But sometimes mm. down the line, if you don't consult with the Holy Ghost. Mm. Ask them, are you still in the house of bread? It, it, it <laughs> begins to reveal itself Hallelujah. as sickly, you mm. see. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's very it's very important because because so many times this is where people can make decisions out of haste. Yeah. And not consulting the Holy the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. So one, make sure you know your identity. Yeah. And also what is it that we learn? Don't change your name yes. because of your circumstances. Mm. They change their name because of their circumstances. Yes. Hallelujah. But don't change your name because your circumstances. What do I mean by that? Yes. You know, you know, when the father looks at you, he calls you by your name. Mm. Hallelujah. There's a name that God calls you by. Mm. Hallelujah. He calls you blessed. Mm. So when things don't look like you are blessed, yes. don't change your name. You change your name by wrong confessions. Mm. I'm reminded mm. of Gideon. Actually, yeah, I love the story of Gideon because oh, hallelujah. God I says, "Mighty man of valor. valor." Yeah, and He's encouraging him to go, you know, and get what is His. And mm -hmm. God has empowered him. God has, you know, um, given him the ability mm -hmm. to be victorious. But He says, "Look at me. Yeah, I'm, the I'm least. from you know a small house. Or... From a small house, I'm the least of this. You see, His confession. He doesn't know who He is. Mm -hmm. So when you say God knows your name, yeah, God yeah. knows you by name. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to call yourself what God calls you. Yeah. Don't change your name from Pleasant yeah. to Mara mm. because of your situation. Yeah. Don't change your name from Pleasant to Mara because of your situation. You know, God calls you by name. He knows. He calls, he calls you blessed. He calls you more than a conqueror. Mm. He calls you victorious. He calls you beautiful. He calls you beautiful. Yeah. They head and never they tell. Yeah. Above and never beneath. Hallelujah. Mm. That's what he calls you. Yes. Hallelujah. So don't call yourself something that the word of God does not call you. Yes. And if people yeah. do that, you have to rebuke them. Mm. If you have somebody in your life calling you things that God does mm. not call you, you must rebuke it. Whether that person is a pastor, whether it's a parent, whether it's, it's, mm. a, it's a boyfriend, you have to uh, rebuke it. You have to cancel that. Because that's not who you are. That's not who you are. Exactly. Exactly. And don't allow situations change that. Yeah. You know, because the thing that we learn from here is that not to walk by sight. Mm -hmm. Remember I say that, that these things are there to teach us something. So what do we learn from this? Hallelujah. We learn that do not leave the house of bread. Yes. Think, you know, you may have prayed about something for, I don't know, how many months mm. or how many years even. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Mm. When God speaks a word, it will come to pass. Amen. He says, my word will never return unto me void. Mm. You may not see anything physically. Hallelujah. Mm. But it does not mean it's not happening. Yeah. Abraham may not have seen physically the sun. He saw the years flying by. Mm. He saw, hallelujah, you are celebrating a birthday <laughs> year after year yes. with no seed. Yeah. But the word of the Lord came to pass. Mm. Hallelujah. Do not change what God has declared over you. To Abraham, he says, I have made you a father of ma nations. Mm. That's what I call you, a father of many nations. Mm. He did not, hallelujah, change his name by speaking negative. There are some of you that are watching that because of situations in your life, you've been making the wrong confessions. Mm. Hallelujah. Maybe just the same like, like Naomi. Mm. You have said, hey, I'm Mara. Yeah. Just the same like, you know, um, you know he, he, Naomi's husband. You may have called your children Malon mm. or Chilean because based on situations. But don't call yourself what God has not called you. There's a scripture mm. that says, hope deferred makes the mm. heart sick. 
sometimes the heart is very sick. Mm. So the it's a, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak mm. these sick things, like sick confessions, mm. because um, it's not um, emblemed in the word of God. Mm. So w- when that happens, your hope is deferred. This is when we need the grace of God. Mm. We need the strength of God. This is when we go to God. God, strengthen me mm. in this difficult situation. Um, I think somebody like David does it so well. Yes. I mean, the guy is always crying. Mm. <laughs> he was always crying, mm. always praying, mm. always asking you know, God for help. <laughs> but the Lord gives us the answer. <laughs> I, I know, yeah. No, <laughs> it's a new covenant. It's, he gives that. And what is the answer? Yes. You know, when you find yourself in that situation yeah. where yeah. you feel that hope is yes, gone, is lost, yeah. you know, the Bible says that, hallelujah, faith comes by hearing. Mm. And hearing by the word of God. And in the new covenant, the Bible says that, you know, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm. And, you know, hope is different from faith. Hope is one day God will do this. I hope to be married one day. I hope to be prosperous one day. I hope to be healed one day. That's tomorrow. But faith takes what hope puts in tomorrow and oh brings God. it now. Yes. Because that's why it says now faith is. Yes. Hallelujah. And God wants us to walk in faith, mm. not in a hope, Amen. but in faith. Amen. And this happens when we hear the word of God. Yes. You know, the spirit yes. of God revealed this to me that, you know, just like in the physical, when yeah. somebody is born, born deaf, it means they cannot hear. It means they cannot also speak because they can't hear words because they can't hear words they cannot speak that's why you know to a little child we we say papa say dada for for them to what repeat what they're hearing yeah. in the spiritual is the same if you don't hear the word you won't speak right hmm. hallelujah oh if you don't hear the word of god you won't speak right the reason why a lot of people speak doubt and unbelief, they walk by senses, is because they don't hear the word of God. Mm. Hallelujah. So they are deaf to the word of God, so they are dumb in speech. Hey. Hallelujah. Mm. You know, when I saw that, I said, Woo, I, I don't want to be deaf and dumb. No, I want to hear the word of God. Mm. And God. I want to speak. Because yeah. when you hear, just like a little child, say dada. Then you see, then the little child says that, that just like God is saying to you, say I'm blessed. My so God. you say I'm blessed. Yes. Say I'm the head and not the tail. Amen. So you say I'm the head and not the tail. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not moved by sight. Mm. Naomi moved by was moved by sight. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Elimelech. Elimelech moved by sight. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. The marriage was unfruitful. Yes. And also mm. with um, Ruth's marriage is very fascinating. Mm-hmm. The level of unfruitfulness, her first marriage. Yeah. Was even throughout those 10 years, she doesn't believe in God. Yes. Mm-hmm. She doesn't she does believe not. in yeah. God. Mm. Um, it's only until she says, uh, when mm. um, uh, Naomi is about to go back, go, she yes, says, your my God, God shall be my will God. Be my God. So mm. that's when the conversion happened for Ruth. Mm. Before that, it didn't take place. There were no conversions. Mm. And sometimes in Christianity, like we were discussing, mm. it's like that. We are not fully, fully, fully um, making mm. the Lord our master. Mm. We are dabbling in um, tarot cards, but we're going to church. Mm. We're singing praise songs, but we're doing crystals and astrology. Mm. So we are still dabbling in, in little things and our hearts are not fully given to God. Because mm. when you do that, it's because you're looking for answers. You're looking for yeah. meaning and answers. Mm. And God wants us to be fully in, not because there's a tragedy that has happened, but yes. because he's Lord, he's master. Mm. So he wants us to be, to fully, be fully in. He wants yes. to work with us. Mm. He wants us to walk in the fullness of his glory, Hallelujah. his blessings, his power, his authority mm. as kings and priests. Hallelujah. To stay in the place of bread. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. It's it's very, you know, powerful yeah. that, you know, don't only make Jesus mm. your savior. Make him Lord. The master. Lord it means he's he's the owner. Yeah, he's the owner. Hallelujah. He's the owner. You know, don't just only give just a few things to the Lord. Mm. Give him everything. Amen. Everything to him. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, don't leave the house of God. Don't leave the presence of God. Don't leave, hallelujah, the house of bread. I know that, you know, things may look like there are green pastures there. But you know what? They that wait on the Lord, hallelujah. They that wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. 
they that wait. So wait on him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I like the new covenant. We don't only just wait on him. We wait with him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We wait because he leads us. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't, don't make the same mistake as Elimelech. Just based on sight. Because yes. we are not ones that live by sight. But we walk by faith. Hallelujah. And also we want to remind you. Hallelujah. Don't change your name mm -hmm. by speaking something contrary to what God says who you are. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So we want to pray for you. Yes. Hallelujah. And we also want to remind you who you are. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might be in a situation that you are wondering how God is going to do this. Yeah. Even maybe some of you are believing God for finances. Mm -hmm. Do not speak that you are broke. Hallelujah. That's not your name. <laughs> That's not your name. No. If Hallelujah. You zero in your no, even if one is zero, even you know. if it's minus one thousand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I am blessed. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I, I, you know, confess that I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, you seed begging bread. Amen. I am the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Are you seeing this? Confess, hallelujah, the name that God yes. calls you. He calls you blessed. He calls you a more than a conqueror. He calls you the light of this world. He calls you the salt of this earth. He calls you a king hallelujah. and a priest. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. He calls you royalty. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you seeing this? Remember the scripture that we began, hallelujah, by. When we are looking in a glass, yes. hallelujah, we are seeing the glory of God. Mm. So he calls you the glory of God. You know, so many Christians, hallelujah, have not understood this, even the, what the glory of God is. Mm. I know we look in the Old Testament and say, hey, when the praises all go up and the glory comes down, we can sing those songs. But, you know, in the new what covenant, you are the glory of God. Oh my God. Even scripture says this, you know, the Bible says, you know, the man yeah. is the head of his wife yeah. and it's Christ and the, and Christ is the head of the man mm. and God is the head of Christ. Hallelujah. But he says that God, man is the glory of God. Of God. Hallelujah. So you are that glory mm -hmm. of God. Don't call yourself another name. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus name. We thank you for yes, everybody Lord. that is watching. Even as we've been sharing the power in names, oh Father. We thank you, my Lord God Almighty. That Father, your children, you call them, hallelujah, my Father, by a different name. You say that we are blessed, my Lord. We are more than conquerors. The head and never the tail. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. Born not of the will of flesh and blood, but born of the will of God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. My Father, no matter what they're going through, my yes, Lord, Lord God, I thank you that by your spirit, my Lord, you are quickening their hearts to understand through the scriptures who they are so that they may confess who they are, not what situations tell them. Not what, my Lord God, my God, my Lord, even family or friends who are not in the covenant, who are not in the faith, tell them. My Father, I thank you and I give you the praise. Thank you, my Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, that they are your delight. They are the apple of your eye. My Father, my Lord, they are called to a life of glory and to a life of virtue. In the name of Jesus. That they'll never leave your presence, my Lord, because in the world there's nothing, my Father. Nothing, my Lord, that can satisfy in the world. My Lord, my God, the kingdom of this world and the glory of them. My Lord, they are nothing compares to your presence, to your fellowship, Lord Jesus. And Father, I pray that none will leave the house of bread. My Lord, and move by senses, but they'll walk by faith. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. Just Amen. praise Him wherever you are. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mm. Sense this, this, um, the presence of the Lord very powerfully. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you so much. Amen. He loves you so much. And the Lord is, the Lord is so gentle and He's, he's so humble. 
and he loves you so much. There's nothing that you can hide from him. There's nothing that you need to pretend from him. Just go as you are in his presence. Um, yeah. (laughs) So we thank you so much for spending time with us today. Um, and I pray that, you know, you've learned something new today concerning Ruth's first marriage and Mm. we'll see you again next week. I don't know if you'll be joining me, but (laughs) we'll see you next week. (laughs) God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.